Now, if you're an Australian politician, it's probably best you avoid the latest edition of The Economist. The influential magazine, read by lots of world leaders, looks at Australia's prosperity, but it's not too flattering about local leaders. The magazine's Johnny Grimmond wrote an article. It's a, a long one. It's a cover story and takes out almost the complete edition. And he told News Breakfast that Australian politicians here appear to be far too focused on the short term. The impression I get, and I think I'm not alone, is that an awful lot of political exchange and debate and controversy centres on very short-term things. Uh, who won the day? Who won the week? What are the latest polls say? What's the latest on talkback radio? Who's looking good? Who's down? Who's up? And I think it would be uh, good if some politicians actually... Uh, raised some of the issues of how is Australia going to cope with some of the problems created by a high dollar, for instance. Lots of people are picking up on Johnny Grimmond's comments that, uh, according to The Economist, a lot of Australia's politicians couldn't pull the skin off a rice pudding, <laughs> which prompted a, a bit of a debate here as to when we last had a rice pudding. It's obviously I a very English expression. <laughs> Scott writes on our Facebook page, the egocentric and unabashedly rude politics of the country simply reflects the greater population. The country is run as the country is lived. Everyone for themselves and anyone who speaks out or is different is ridiculed and shamed for their crimes. Well, squabbles over the carbon tax, Pokey's reform and the very public slap on the wrist for Malcolm Turnbull. Looks like The Economist might have a point about Australian politics being a punch and judy show. So let's talk about the week in politics now and joining you this morning, some really terrific guests. We're delighted that joining us from our Adelaide, from Adelaide are the former leader of the Democrats, uh, Natasha stock Despoja, and the former Liberal Foreign Minister, Alexander Downer. They're really family when you think about it, as Natasha stock Despoja is the wife of and Alexander Downer is the partner of political supremo Ian Smith. So he's our, he's our uh, uh, uniting feature this Business morning. Partner. Good. <laughs> yeah, we figured that out. Good morning to both of you and we're glad you could join us. Thanks so much. Good morning. Good morning. Look, let's start off with this um, uh, tension that sprung up between uh, Malcolm Turnbull, Tony Abbott and also Warren Ench about that really, really rather inflammatory email that, that was sent out by the, the chief opposition whip. First of all, Alexander Down, what did you make of that? Was that a necessary email for him to send out in your view? Oh, definitely. Um, uh, in a parliament as tight as this, uh, every vote counts. I was a member of parliament for 24 years. I can't pretend I never missed a division, a bit of a revelation to my co former constituents. I occasionally did, and um, particularly in opposition, it was a bit different when I was the foreign minister, but in opposition, I certainly got, uh, well, in those days, faxes and letters from the, from the whip. People have to turn up for divisions unless they get leave. You can apply for leave, um, and if the whip gives you leave, that's fair enough. But if you just miss a division because you couldn't feel, you didn't feel like going, it doesn't matter who you are, how senior you are in the party, um, the whip will get in touch with you. There's no question of that. I don't think it's inflammatory at all. I think it's entirely appropriate. So then, has, in your view, has Malcolm Turnbull overreacted when he went on to describe, well, first of all, the email he says was inaccurate and he clearly wasn't happy about it? Well, I mean, honestly, in the great sweep of history, <laughs> um, what does it matter? I mean, why would he care? He should, he should look at the email, take note of the fact that he hadn't 